this is for our client in Chigwell, yeah. right? I spoke to her yesterday. They're exchanging and completing this week. They've got had a budget estimate for um, normal construction, but they're keen to find out ways to value engineer it down or even to shorter the construction. Yeah. The so program, shorten the construction program. Well, the, the way, the way so. this compares is it compares, it probably be comparable in price, if not less, but the spec is higher. So when you're looking at things like during project management of a building, you're looking at time, cost, and quality. So generally, if you if you increase the quality, you increase the time or the cost, mm -hmm. as you know. If you, so one, if you if you move one thing, it normally impacts on the other. The thing with, with the way we build, it, we increase in the spec because we're increasing the the sustainability of the building. So if we if we build this way. Uh, and we can get the walls down to 0 0.13, which brings down the overall running cost of the building mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. And, give, and it, if you build it the way we would suggest, you can get an EPC rating of A. An EPC rating of A, the energy performance of the mm -hmm. building, great A rated, increases the value of the home as well. Mm -hmm. So not only does, does it make SIPS construction speed it up, it can help you in the build cost, but also in the running costs and increase the value of the property as well. So it's a win, 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 yeah. win, win. The big thing I think you've missed out as well is um, it's an off-site build. Yeah. Okay, so it comes, well, okay. flat pack comes in a lorry, yeah. flat pack. It's not weather dependent. Not weather. Well so you can. We have, we have got pictures of us putting this up in the snow. I built. A, we built a house in the snow. But the speed is so a lot. Is, is yeah. twice as quick, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the different. The difference is with this building as well. A hybrid building is against uh, any other construction. Block traditional brickwork and blockwork is slow, and the walls are thicker, mm. and so you need a lot of insulation in there. And the, the construction depth is thicker, a lot thicker. So you're losing square feet. And as you said in London, that's important. So the, the construction depth is thinner. It can be built in all weathers, and it goes up quicker. But also, once you get to roof level, you don't have. To, you can load the roof up while you're doing the outside. So it takes all the walls and the windows off the critical path. So when you get to roof level, you can be roofing this at the, same time. Time, at, at the same time you're bringing the outside rain screen up. So you're in a win-win so program. So the facade, so facade of building, say it's like either render brick. Uh, cladding system, uh, anything. The facade of that building comes off the critical path. Yeah. That can be put up any time. Yeah. It's like when we built in Wentworth, we built concrete frame. Yeah. Only because that's what the client wanted. Yeah. But this supersedes. Yeah. No. So when a well. client has got uh, planning for traditional build and building control drawings are already designed, do the drawings change? No, what we've done, because generally what would happen with you come to us with the planning drawing, so we, it, we can work with an architect, yeah. so what you really want to know is the best, we're doing this all the time, we, work, we get the planning drawings from the architect and we say hold on a minute, yeah. stop, we'll come up with a concept, then a concept might not be, because you might get down stands, so you might need a big beam because you might have an open mm. plan, so the architect said, and they don't like that one beam in there, we've got a down stand, can we put two? So you, two beams are going in there, so you've got no down stand, so there's, there's, we, we, we turn through on the concept, mm. so just to get the aesthetics right, but, so from when we've got the conceptual, then we, we've got a price, because we know what we're building, mm. and then we go away, we do an approval drawing, the approval drawing goes to the architect who checks it dimensionally, once the dimensions are right, we go into detailed fabrication drawings mm. and then procurement and making yeah. it. And at the same time, our drawings are fed into the architectural drawings who, who submit those for building control. Yeah. Have so you got your own architects in house as well? No, 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 we work with architects, but we have got we have got some great architects we work yeah. with. Yeah, some sustainable. We have got access to our own architects, but so not in house. Do you, do you think would most architects have worked with this system before, or not really? You'd be surprised. Especially in London. You'd be surprised how many. How, you'd be surprised how many haven't. No, that's what no. I'm saying. What yeah. happens with this? You have to remember. This is it's 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 a win-win because it's fast build, it's eco-friendly, but not only that, it gives you a, 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 it's reduced construction debt and gives you a U value. If, if you build with this and add-on solutions we've got, yeah. you get a U value of 0 0.13, 0 point, up, 0 0.15 and under. It's classed as passive. That's what it's classed exactly, up. So yeah. you're classing as this, it's almost well, it is passive mm. fabric first construction. Mm. So you're not building a passive house, but you're building and if you take part, parts of it out of there, it's yeah. passive. It's 0.13. Yeah. 
I mean, we can increase that yield value. We've got quite a few passive house new build opportunities over the last three or four years. There was a lovely one in Wimbledon. Yeah. But he came to us uh, from an architect. Obviously, we've never done a passive house before. There's, there's, listen, there's no reason why you should go past. There's no reason. No. And that will explain to yeah. you. We've got other reasons. Passive means you have to orientate it to a certain. It gives you constraints. It, you're constrained to help with it, really. Yeah. It's an architect's nightmare. It becomes box set and constrained. With, with what we've got with our with our renewable heating company relieves you of these constraints, which we can we can talk about later. Yeah. So we've got a way of well, this is a fabric first approach, but we've got yeah. a way of heating the building independently, not yeah. through the glazing. Yeah. These not, are not passive. These are, these are concept drawings we did on Butter Steep Rise, right? And people think about high end properties and worried yeah. about this being a cheaper alternative. The, the chap who was buying this was buying this for a lot of money. It's a place to sort of sit their old Berkshire uh, golf club. Yeah. And this is what we designed as, as a concept, okay? So these are concept drawings that Andy did. We got the planning drawings and these yeah. are the concept drawings. What's the size of this house? It, it was 8,000, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, 8,000 square foot. The, the other thing with this is when we design it, we design it to give you room in the roof. All our systems are designed to, unless it's, well, with a flat roof, you've got a room in the roof, but a lot of these buildings don't have a room in the roof. So we, so we work, we design, we, we do the concept of the roof first and then we work down. So the load paths are going down through the building. So we, because you need a room in the roof. On the fine, generally, if you build traditionally, all your walls have got to go where they go because that's the way it stands mm -hmm. up. So you've, you're constrained, like all the walls have got to be built. Mm -hmm. We can make it, building this this modern, it's called modern methods of construction, we can put, we can open the buildings mm -hmm. out so we've got limited load bearing walls, which then allows you to walk through, mm -hmm. walk the course after the event when we've gone and put partitions in. So you might want to move a partition a metre that way, this way. If you're building traditionally, you can't move them. And not involve a structural engineer. No, because it's, you've built the structure. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, oh, right. so we're, we're designing one in Cannock now. We did it yesterday for the architect. The builders want to build a basement and then they want to build a building on top of it, but they don't want constraint because they want to be able to go around with some spray paint and say, mark, out. mark it out after. So yeah. we're opening up all the spaces so you can walk the course in there, so you can move a wall three foot that way, yeah. two foot that way. Yeah. So so I call it the sort of, uh, it's always in the car park thing, because it's like building a car park where you have your structural stability yeah. in there. And then afterwards, you infill just with put the walls in where you want. Yeah. But you've got to, you've got when you're doing things like that, you've got to des you've got to design, design where the windows are going to go, design where the penetration is going to go through the building for your services. These are the important parts that you've got to design out straight away. But all building work and all construction work and all design architecture then should all be done at, at the pre-construction. Mm -hmm. And then everything else should be easy after that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just rush into it. A lot of people go right. Well, we've got some pine drones, just get some architects to do it. Mm. And the next thing you know, you're happy building the property and it doesn't work. Yeah. So it's happened. It also, yeah, it also, when we design it, we can minimise some foundation strips and minimise foundations. Mm. So sending the loads to the edges helps you minimise foundation mm. design. But they're also the way we do it. When we're designing this, we're also con all the time considering cold bridging, which is a major factor in sustainable building now, and the building regs in June. So we look at how can we mitigate cold bridging coming through. So cold bridging is just basically if you had a wall like that, you've got a lump of steel here or something mm -hmm. to carry a load, you've got to stop the cold coming from the outside to inside so you don't get any what's called inter interstitial condensation. Mm -hmm. It's your dew point. Mm -hmm. So when cold meets warm, you get a dew point and it's stopping that. Mm -hmm. So we, we design, we've got all standard details for where floors meet junctions and everything so we can get rid of all, mm -hmm. the majority of cold bridging we can eradicate. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to consider all this, and that's yeah. what architects at the moment, not they don't struggle with it, because most architects like, they enjoy the conceptual stuff, mm. but when it comes to doing the engineering and, and opening up the building mm. and considering, let's free up mm. the space, let's consider cold bridging, that's yeah. where we come in and help them really. I think it's, um, obviously architects in London, they don't do many new builds, do they? No. So it's just getting, Especially, we work with a couple of architects in house who need to get their heads around this for sort of mansards or maybe extensions. On a mansard roof, we've done quite a lot. A mansard roof extension and everything. What you'll generally do is they'll either go up in brickwork and have to put a lot of steelwork in there and etc. etc. Yeah. So we try these. 
become these are obviously this will mitigate the need for steel work because mm. these become load bearing but they, when they're together they act like a truss mm. so when it's, it acts like a big truss so it spreads the load yeah. across, mm. uh, across the areas mm. you've got to generally you've got to look at what's in there and engineer it mm. you've got to marry it in mm. but the other beauty of that is it goes really quick mm. you're not like there for days and days if you're trying to put a roof on an existing building this this does quick there yeah, goes up well, we've got we've got a few uh, uh, mansard problems. We can try and flip them over to this method straight away, couldn't we? Really? Yeah, yeah. You want again your constraint with us is just giving us enough time to do, to draw it. Yeah. We have to because we have to. We can't just say here's a load of panel, yeah. cut it and carve it. <coughs> we have to look it's at a, it. It's a a design. So your set. design stage, how long does that take? It depends how big the but it, yeah. it, it generally from when an order we we, we can have it drawn in. Depends how big it is. In four to eight weeks, yeah, and then we have to procure. Uh, week say six, we're procuring materials, so we get materials in. So we're looking at from order to sort of like being on site ten to twelve weeks. Yeah, and the whole idea is if you get it's the planning like stage, eight. you get at the planning stage and you, and get the architect involved, then that doesn't have an impact exactly. on the program. It, it reduces the program overall. Because almost some of ours are already past that stage, aren't they? They're, they're all oven ready, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. But the guy we're seeing on tomorrow, yeah, Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday yeah. he may, you know, yeah. maybe there's something, you know, Will can start talking about, yeah. you know, SIPs. If you've got some oven ready, as you say, this is oven ready, really. Yeah. We can convert them. That's oven ready because there's- It's just time. I don't think, is there, is there a full tender pack on that or any, uh, is there design drawings? <coughs> no, we've got, got, drawings, uh, we've got design drawings at the moment, so, uh, yeah. so that one there, that, that's a prime example, I mean, yeah. this one here, it didn't, they didn't have had construction drawings, did it? They're budget steep, no, it no. didn't actually, so that's where we took it from, we, the concept, and, and the, the chap loved it, he, yeah. he wanted to build it. So but we can, so like, one what's ready to go and engineer, what you really don't want to be doing is paying for engineering twice. Exactly. But it's not generally, if we were in at the beginning, we probably could, could, have, could have took some of the steel work away. We could yeah, have, we yeah. could, with the way we built it. Mitigated it with the use of the system. Yeah. yeah. Structural in. Yeah. The the, the, system. Yeah. Because all we, we can make savings. For, for argument's sake, we, want, we did a school in the Lake District and they had, they had £200,000 of steel work in it. And we, we fabricate our own steel work. We've got accreditation for a 1090, third party accreditation for that. But so I looked at the engineering on it and removed up 200 grand of steel work from it. So we did it without any steel work. So there's a cost saving there as well. Yeah, so we, we built it without any steel work, which permitted the school, the school didn't have the budget. So when we so removed the steel work, it released, it brought the budget down, they could build it and it got built. Yeah. The big thing that people get mixed up with is timber fane and SIPs, mm. structural insulated panel systems. Mm. There's a vast difference. This is a system. This is a system between steel and panel rather than timber frame, which is usually yeah. timber frame. So how many years has this, this method been around? It's been in America, like 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not new. They've been exactly. polystyrene, but the difference between timber frame is you have a, a probably a nine mil sheet on the outside and you'd have studs yeah. that's 400, 600 centres and that's what carries the load. Yeah. So when you build a timber frame, it moves. So you load yeah. up the roof, so you have yeah. to look, they leave a gap above the windows and everything, depending on how big it is. Well. And the building then settles down, which doesn't help with your bridging, your insulation, yeah. and everything. So it shrinks, it moves, and that's the yeah. nature of the beast. Yeah. But the SIP panel, what happens is, the, because this, this is in an injected form, it creates a shear, for, a shear bond on that face of the OSB, mm. which you can calculate and you can test, which has been done. So they know the shear, it's a composite panel. Yeah. So obviously, with it being composite, it takes a, a, a hell of a lot of load. It's yeah. really, really strong. So across, across the, you've got a shear value there, mm. which you haven't got with a timber frame, because you're poking insulation in and not creating no bond. So that removes the need, negates a lot, a lot of timber really. Stops any cold bridging, but it's absolute. The rule of thumb is like for like, th if you were to build a straight wall there out of timber frame and that was it, this would be seven times stronger. Yeah. And it doesn't move. It does not exactly. it does not shrink and you can load it up. Yeah. There's less parts involved, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So you get it a trad traditional build house, you build it out of blocks and yeah. bricks, right? And you always get movement with the foundations and you always get cracking. Majority of the time when you build out the SIPs, because it's a, it's a full structure, you don't get a lot of movement. You don't get a lot Why of Why doesn't the big house builders use it, like Taylor Winfield, Persimmon? Because they use timber frame. Yeah. 
And they, why do they put roof trusses on a building? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's my bugbear. They, they'll build a house and not build a room in the roof, and they'll put roof trusses on because they're cheaper. Because you, you drive by all these new cheaper. houses and you think, yeah. why isn't there a lock conversion? Yeah. Why is there not why? big roof? Why? Yeah. With trusses? Yeah. yeah. Uh, why? Because it's cheap yeah. and fast, and that's yeah. what they know. They yeah. don't like deviating yeah. from what they're. Yeah. So they don't deviate. Because they don't want to use the room in the roof because yeah. they they've got to get access there. It, 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 it adds on for them. If you was building it, there's no way. But why argument is when you build, if you want to save money, why would you build a pitch roof? Mm. Because there's when you flatten that roof out, yeah. is that, there's the area. So there's the area of the roof. Yeah, that's the footprint of the roof. Yeah. If you yeah. built, if you built a, a mono pitch roof on yeah. that. And you'd get a room in the roof, and you would be able to get, you'd be able to insulate yeah. it, get rid of all yeah. the details, and it's less material. If you put a pitch roof yeah. on it like that, look at all, look at all the additional. You've got double the material exactly. for roofing it. It's just simple and as that. Look, some kind of flat roof. It gives someone the option to have a modular put on top. Of the yeah, but it's yeah. it's as easy as look at that. There's a pitch roof. There's yeah. other material. Flatten that pitch roof out material. You've got double the material roof roofing yeah. rain screen material. If you have a flat roof. You've got basically that. You've got, yeah. you've got the roof covering, you know. So they're not really saving. So that's the plan is we could go yeah. up and build flat roofs. and We can even do dual pitch roofs, butterfly roofs, yeah. and all. But they do, again, even if the plan is make them go for a pitch roof, they should use the room in the roof. You can get a plant room up there. You can get your solar on there. You can get all the kit in there. Yeah. To, and it, and it, uh, water travels down better than it was up, so you can you can you, all your all your plant room cake can go in exactly. there. Exactly, all they want is that traditional looking house, don't they? Yeah, but you can. But it's just all you need to do. Or the only way the difference is make you, make you, you, they're putting gables up anyway. Yeah. So make your gables support a ridge and just just put traditional t just timber it yeah. and insulate it. You can get a U value with you don't have to use panel. You can get a U value with no point one three using a traditional ridge. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy. We were talking, it's, discussing, it's, it's you, crazy. you sent me this morning about the, um, the robots, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, what Andy's doing is getting robots now to basically detail, right? So we've got all these details here. I don't know if you can see that. Well, is that in your factory, is it? Yeah. Uh, so so, that, so that, that's the connection which yeah. we're doing on these lo these yeah. like super luxurious tree houses, nice. even though, yeah, million pound tree houses, and that's the base connection onto a screw pile. So the robots are engineer that connection. Yeah. So we're looking at engineering panel engineering. So the, the robot will basically one of these will engineer that. So that will cost yeah. less less to engineer because it will be all set up exactly, and that will just it will just engineer it. So all the cuts and yeah. everything. So we, yeah, that, that's an engineered timber frame, for that when it, but not comparable to so this, it's comparable mm -hmm. to a, mm -hmm. what you would see that structure inside. Mm -hmm. So again, when we're designing this, if you had, sometimes when architects like, they might have a minimal house, and that beam might be, that might be steel, and this, we suggest, why don't you put one beam in oak, just because it yeah. brings it that's, down a little bit. That's your end product from Sims. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So, Beautiful house. So there's nothing, there's nothing really any detail that's mm. any different. No, that's a that's got a, it's got a fireplace in it with a log burner. What happens with yeah. a log burner? It brings the air from the outside and goes up the chimney, so you're not there's no problems with air tightness. It's got everything in that building, and that's got a U value of 0.13. And there, that's there, it. There, mm. there, there's your, your concept, full concept oh. 3D drawing to show you how the sips and the steel and everything works together. Yeah, integration. Yeah, that that model's built from different. Yeah. drawing packages and put together the, the architects like to, they call it a building information mm -hmm. model yeah, and they, they, they build it from like Revit and stuff Revit, like that yeah, but yeah. We, we build our models from separate packages and bring yeah. them in basically that's that, that's probably built in wood engine mm -hmm. and the steel works brought in mm -hmm. um, and we do a model from that but that can be integrated into a BIM model if architects want to but it's not mm -hmm. we've already done it you know like because what happens with the, these floors as well because you've got eco joists in the floors mm -hmm. you, you don't have to plot your path through for your M and A because you go straight, straight through, through the floors, the, the so it's floors. not a problem. So you don't have to join, so a joist. Yeah, so you just go, so you don't have to really worry about running your services because you've got eco joists in there. And when it hits a piece of steelwork, we we will put holes in the steelwork so you've got holes and we'll frame them out so that. You, and there's, you there's, 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 there's a thickness of it. That's well, that's that's one of the houses we built. We built two for Brett now in uh, Whaley Bridge in Derbyshire, and he loves it. Yeah. He, 
it's just must be so warm. It is. Well, he's got he's, he's over three stories, yeah. and it's not finished. He's not got a front door. Well, he might have a front door on now, but well, he's, he didn't have a front door on, and he had a one kilowatt heater in there keeping yeah. the door. The whole house was warm. Yeah. A small one kilowatt heater was warm. Yeah. It didn't drop below 17, 17 degrees. So what? But he needed to put an extraction fan in. So yeah. when he drilled through the wall, that's you can see the construction. He's got stone. He's got stone on the outside of that. And it's, it's, and it's I guess it's good for sound insulation. As well, well, no, yeah, it's good acoustic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Good. Around here, you're right underneath the flight flight path. Well, so everyone is getting noise yeah. feedback. You see, he's got stone, then he's got a cavity, then he's got a membrane, then he's got a sip panel, then he's got twenty five mil foil bite, and then he's got. So you can see our head. Our head the, the, when the guys did the airtight test on that, and I can get Brett to do a. Uh, sort of like do a recommendation on it really but he um, the airtight guy said he's never had it so good on any and he's been doing years and years and years and that was the best airtight this test has ever got he did it was pedantic on it he did make sure it was right and then uh, like I said it is he, what the beauty of it is you know when you're in a six building because when he was building the, we got the windows as soon as he got the windows in uh, he didn't have a door downstairs, but upstairs, when it the, the fluctuations in temperature from outside to in took three days to change inside, even though he didn't have a door on. Mm -hmm. So when it dropped, when it went cold outside, he walked in. It, it kept an ambient temperature. It mm -hmm. took three days for the air to filter oh, through yeah. the door with no door on. And when it was red hot outside, it was cool inside like a church. And, uh, and that's why Cotswolds would have been perfect for this one. That would have been spot on. Uh, uh, that you would have been not, why they you would not. This? I, 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 you, can, you can video me saying this. Yeah. I would not build any different way than that. That yeah. is the way I would build. Yeah. I would build that way yeah. because it's it's a no brainer. Yeah. Because what happens with your floors? So you, you, if you've got a concrete floor or you've got a beam and block or you've got a raised floor out of timber or everything, you, you insulate above that floor. So insulate above the floor and bring your insulation up to the panel, not directly because you have a bit of an expansion thing here. Yeah. So bring the, and then you get no cold bridging coming through the floor. So you are mitigating cold bridging. It's all to do with the junctions and the details. But you would, you, I would never build any different whatsoever, for purely time, strength, um, value, and the, the savings you're gonna make over time. Running, running well, as costs. As I said, Will's been singing your praises for weeks now. Yeah. Well, I think you start. I think I, I've not started yet. No, no, no. <laughs> the other thing is you can put, you talk about acoustics, our floors, if we know, yeah, at the first floor, we can run a screeded floor on it. We can run 40, 50, 60, 70 mil screed on the floor, which helps with the acoustics as well. And you, you generally don't need to run underfloor heating at the first floor because it's too warm. Mm. Incredible. You put underfloor heating at ground floor just because you you want to be red, absolutely red hot, don't you? You want your feet you running across <laughs> the <laughs> But people like it, don't they? So, but it switches off because it's all about minimising, minimising kilowatts. But people like warm feet. You'll be red up. <laughs> you will. Will, is this what you've done in your house? Your no, I, I'm going to do an extension on, on the house yeah. with this. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to, we're going to do six. Uh, we're going to do... Uh, so it's lightweight as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's lightweight. It's near water. I mean, ground screws, yeah. okay, because uh, I want to get away from concrete, so we're going to use ground screws, uh, and then we're going to we'll deck it out off the ground screws. Uh, and then we'll put the six panels on there, mm. uh, the extension on a flat roof. Which, which lends itself, you see, because if you've got an airflow underneath, it'll last forever. So underneath, you've got, if you've got a timber deck and you've got 150 or, or, of airflow underneath, that'll never, ever, ever rot. Mm. Well, saying that. Mm. But you know, it lasts, yeah. it'll last. It'll, yeah. And then you insulate above, so you've got no what cold bridging coming from. The house caught fire. That's the same as every building, same as yeah. any timber yeah. frame building. Yeah. Everything you've got timber, yeah. so what happens is the out the inside is fireproof with plasterboard, same yeah. as every other building in, in the world. So you either have half an hour or an hour, so you can use two layers of plasterboard, one layer of plasterboard, yeah. or you can use a thermocell board. Or some corridors might need you might need staircases in some places. Fire, but if, if there was a fire, would the whole building have to be ripped down? Because it on a brick traditional, you, it would. But if you use no, steel on a brick to do yeah, it, yeah, it has to come down. And yeah. the heat hits the steel. The yeah. steel is bricks. Going to come down, it's the, mo the, the motor petrifies in fires. Bricks do as well. It's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. This probably well, it, some it's it, it, the lesser of two evils. Again, steel in an intense fire will buckle, yeah. whereas a big lump of timber will char, and charring gives it yeah. fire resistance. So it's self-protective. Yeah. 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 So not always, people think timber, it will burn. 
it will char and it gives itself fire resistance and it doesn't buckle. Mm. It's the charring what helps it. Where still though, you have to fire protect it exactly the same as you do with these walls. You have to encase it in intermission paint or plasterboard. Board it out. They have to board it out because it's not. It, it does not have fire retardant mm. properties. It buckles well, and collapses. Will you are right. He's an expert. Yes. <laughs> <in this laughs> isn't he? He's no, good. Listen, there's one he's thing I'm not. Have you, have you, have you, have have you put this down in the book yet? No, this will be the last time you ever said that to me. Expert. <laughs> but we're not, we're always learning. I've met experts before, and I'll, 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 every one of them has failed. <laughs> I know, they're all about, it's all about learning, isn't uh, it? It's all about, it's, it's all about. Yeah, you're always thing, learning, thing. we're always yes, learning. We're always learning. But this is the way ahead. Yeah. This is the future. I mean, yeah. and people need to get on board with yeah. it. No, and no. architects need to get on board. And specify. Yeah. There's no such board. thing as an expert, mate. Never. Yeah. No, no, you can have specialists and professors, and they'll never call themselves experts because they're because always, 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 always learning. learning. Yeah. And, and, but you, you, the, the, yeah. You're the, trying. Yeah. You're trying to invent yeah. with these other items new methods and technologies we, to we, go even further. We haven't even scratched the surface on what we can do yet. Yeah. Okay, well, right. I think we've spoken enough about SIPs. Yeah. We're going to definitely be bringing this on board with these, obviously, Chigwell and maybe these loft conversions yeah. and Mansards. Like I said, you don't think extensions, uh, don't, anything, yeah. and even, if it, if it, even if it's got lots of glazing in it, lots of mm. stuff which doesn't need insulation, we could do the steel frame for you. I think we need we to, could do it even as traditional. To create a sort of promo video of maybe in his factory walking around showing different kinds of things and maybe even we'll go yeah. up or we'll yeah. go up there. Yeah. We won't, we won't show because factory small so we don't want to show the size of the factory. No, no just the individual a product, a, a product. Yeah, we can do we, we can, we, the promo is more like us building buildings and bits and pieces. Yeah. That's better. You yeah, because you don't want to give away what you're doing. No, no, yeah. no, no. So no. if you've got a Good. site we can visit and, yeah. and, and show yeah. it and the Bedford shows not Bed, too Bedford is dead because yeah. we're working with the robot guys. Yeah. The house with that one is a show yeah. Is in a prime state to have to take some videos of now. So that's where we've got better and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll be brilliant there, but yeah, yeah. They'll, be, they'll be up for that. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. the ground floor is still at this state, and we've got the yeah. internal walls, it's got the heating in the internal walls, right. yeah, so we, okay. we can find out. We're doing 20 kilowatts of solar in, in his field, he's got three acres outside, so we're putting all the solar in there, running the solar cables, then we're doing a uh, a 300 litre uh, buffer tank for his underfloor heating, 240 litre domestic hot water tank, and then again we're heating the concrete walls, which I'll, mm. I'll move on to in a minute. Amazing. Well, yeah. thank you. No, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the right. stage. Cool. Okay.